in the, the schedule, the first of them. Um, Koke is going to tell us about contextuality, cohomology and paradox. Please. Thank you. Um, this is a joint work with Samson Abramsky and uh, Rui and Ray and uh, Rui Chang. Anyways, um, okay, um, in this talk I, uh, I'm going to uh, show that a uh, no locality and contextuality are of a uh, certain topological nature uh, so that the uh, homology is going to sort of show that contextuality is somewhat like the picture like this impossible figures by issue. And then I'm going to uh, sort of uh, show, uh, give you some results relating uh, yeah, this idea to quantum noble theorems and contextuality arguments. Uh, so let me start with a very brief, very brief uh, review of no locality. So I'm going to uh, use this, uh, well, okay, this is one example. This is not one of my, uh, our setting is more general than this. But the, uh, the setting is that the, uh, there are Alice and Bob and maybe more Charlie and other people. Uh, they can choose uh, from a, uh, several measurements and each measurement has certain number of outcomes. And then we are going to, a, uh, um, this measurement scenario will be recorded by a probability table like this. So this is the uh, uh, Bell scenario, Bell table, and this is going to be uh, inconsistent with a local given. Uh, variable theory and so on, um, and, but it is no signaling, blah blah blah. Anyway, uh, so in this uh, talk, I'm going to sort of uh, do some simplification of instead of probability table using a uh, possibility table by crushing all the non-zero probability to just possible the same value one. Uh, um, so in in a sense, we're just taking the support of probability tables. Uh, so this uh, uh, bell table becomes <coughs> just this. Yep, so it's good. All the non-zero values become possible. Yep. And then the notion of marginals, a convex combination, a mixture, or no signaling, locality, and so on, all carry over from a probability table to possibility table. And in particular, we can talk about the uh, 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 logical version, possibilistic version of locality yeah. so uh, so this table bell table or the support of bell table is not non-local because you can find the probability table with this support uh, that is local but uh, there's a uh, model by Hardy uh, that is of this shape and uh, I can give you late, later I will give you a 10 minute no 10 second <laughs> proof that this is <laughs> sorry uh, uh, yeah. in, in 10 minutes I will give you a 10 second proof <laughs> anyway, so that this is going to be non-local in the logical sense. So uh, that's uh, going to be the, what I'm going to characterize today using a topological idea. Uh, so uh, the key to that characterization is a, a theorem by Fine for the probabilistic tables and abramsky brandenburg for possibility tables that characterizes local tables by the property that they are... Uh, so this is a family of uh, family of several distributions, probability distributions. But this family is local if and only if there is a single, it can be extended to a single uh, probability distribution for all the measurement possible, for all the possible measurements that gives back a, uh, each distribution as a marginal. Yeah. So if it extends to a single big distribution, then if, if and only if, is local. Or in other words, it is a uh, so local tables are sort of a distribution of a deterministic local hidden variable of this shape. So this is sort of a hidden variable saying that the 0, 0, 0, 001 will be the case. This part sent here to Alice, this part sent to Bob, and what Bob and Alice do is to just choose a measurement and open the packet that was that was sent to them. Yeah? So this is a uh, uh, deterministic local even variable theory. So in other words, uh, the t local tables are the convex combinations or disjunctions in the possibilistic case of the deterministic tables for local even variables. Yeah. Do you have any Oh, um, e-locality, so e yes. I'm sorry? It always be um, no. Also true, it's equivalent to locality. Okay. 
this is this is this is a theorem. Yeah. So uh, uh, this is a theorem stating that that characterizes that local hidden variable theory can be characterized by this area distribution. Not not too hard to show, but anyway, I don't have time to show it. Uh, so uh, let me sort of uh, give you kind of a more conceptual upshot of this theorem. So the no signaling but no local tables uh, are locally consistent in the sense of no signaling or in a sense that they, are, uh, they can assign probabilities or possibilities consistently within, within the uh, family of small sets of measurements and then the intersections will be consistent and so on and so forth, that's no signaling but then they, uh, they are globally inconsistent in the sense that they cannot be extended to the entire set of all the measurements okay. that's, that's a uh, sort of the so I'm going to use a topology. Not this local. Local is not uh, space-time local. It's a different topology. I'm going to use a topology on a set of measurements, and then the local global distinction is going to give you characterization of uh, the locality and contextuality. Yeah. So th this is just a. Uh, uh, can, can you go back? There's some words missing. Globally inconsistent. Not able to. Oh, not to able to uh, assign probabilities, oh, okay. possibilities consistently. To <laughs> sorry, it's not even worth writing. It's so um, yeah, sorry, it's just detail. Um, sorry. Uh, okay, I should I should really speed up. Um, so, okay, uh, so there's a uh, topology of set of measurements. So I'm going to use a uh, topological spaces of variables and values in the sense that uh, they can be applied. Uh, so formally, they can be applied to say measurements and outcomes, or sentences, responses, and so on. Very many things can be captured by this formalism, which goes like this: so each variable. Uh, so we are going to take the set of variables as the sort of a base space, as, as sort of a one space, and then for each variable, we are going to take a uh, sort of a set of values, possible values that the uh, that variable can take. Yeah, simple. And then uh, draw them like a fibers over each variables, and then take a disjoint union of all of them, just like you do with the fiber bundles. Yeah. So uh, okay, it's not quite it's not going to be quite fiber bundles, but the idea is the same. You get the uh, construct set like this and set like that, and actually it comes with a nice topology in, uh, because. When you ask a, uh, several questions, or maybe when you make several measurements, answers or outcomes may obey certain constraints. So for instance, in the physical setting, you know, value of the volume and the value of the temperature of the gas are proportional to each other. Or if you take sentences, sentence and its negation, their truth values are anti-correlated, and so on and so forth, right? So the point is that the uh, topology is going to give you, or capture, the criterion that distinguishes good and bad ways of connecting dots just like continuous sections if you draw a graph of function then you say oh this is continuous but this is not and so forth right so topology is going to give you a uh, character uh, so formalization of the constraints of the model you're talking about okay let me uh, now so let's take an example from the Hardy model so uh, to uh, say bound lines, uh, this one, uh, we are going to take a uh, measurement and then connect the dots that are jointly measurable, draw them like with this for readability, and take a uh, uh, values, possible values, possible outcomes over each measurement. Yep. And then, look at this uh, first row of the table. That gives you no constraint at all. It says anything is possible, any combination of 0 and 1 are possible. So you're going to uh, connect dots uh, as far as uh, you can, right, for combinations. But this row is going to tell you that when Alice and Bob measure that combination of measurements, then 0, 0 will be impossible. That's a constraint. So you're going to express that by, you know, missing the 0, 0 dot, uh, 0, 0 edge here. Yeah? Uh, similarly here, and similarly here. So. Uh, table says that the, uh, uh, for this measurement context, the 1-1 one, one is not possible, so 1-1 one, one is missing. Yeah? Okay, so that's good. So this is the bundle for hard model. Now, uh, if you look at the, uh, you can find this so-called global section, uh, sort of a, a 
assignment of values to all the variables that are that is consistent with the constraints. Yeah, so this is global section. But actually, this is going to be exactly like an instruction set or a local hidden variable telling you that the uh, outcomes will be 1010. One, right? So when you uh, when Alice chooses this, Bob chooses this, and measures this, then you can explain that result by referring to local hidden variable theory. That's what this global section allows you to do. On the other hand, look at this uh, uh, section. Can you find a global section containing that? Well, no, right? I try to extend it, extend it, extend it. Fail, fail. Yeah. So the uh, the point is that uh, look, this section doesn't extend to global ones. In other words, no local hidden variable theory can account for that measurement outcome combination. Yeah. So that's that's what. Uh, uh, logical contextuality boils down to in this uh, uh, topological model. So the uh, uh, upshot is that look, there's a local consistency, global inconsistency in this picture. Um, given this, you can think think of even a stronger notion of contextuality that is a uh, uh, instantiated by the Popescu Rolik box, uh, which looks like this. Yeah then you try to find, uh, so here, Hardy, this was the only contextual bit of the table or the bundle, right? I mean, you could see a local hidden variable like this, green, but red, this cannot be extended. But look, here, you cannot find any global section at all. That's what happens in the PR box. So uh, they, we define uh, strong contextuality as a situation in which no global section can be found at all. And then the, uh, you, this gives a sort of a hierarchy of contextuality, probabilistic is the weakest, logical is the middle, and strong contextuality to the right. Uh, PR box is not quantum realizable, but actually, if you look at the uh, quantum mechanics, you can find a, uh, many uh, cases of strong contextuality. I'm going to skip uh, contextuality in logical paradoxes, because the point is that the uh, uh, model is general enough, so the measurement outcome is not the only way you can read it. You can read it as a Boolean values, Boolean variables and values, then you can explain, uh, you can, you can, I mean, the PR box is going to be a model for logical paradoxes. That's sort of an aside. Anyway, um, and then the, uh, this is the formal definition I skip. So, so far, I've been giving you pictures. Uh, there are some formal definitions for this uh, idea. Uh, actually, two equivalent formulations. One is to send the uh, simplicial complex down to another simplicial complex, or start from a simplicial complex and take a pre sheet for that. Those are equivalent. And then the point is that uh, the second formulation allows you to apply cohomology, which is the nice bit, because cohomology is good at capturing local consistency versus global inconsistency, as shown by uh, some famous guy named Penrose. Uh, about this work, about the uh, issues, the uh, impossibility figures. So the point is that, look, if you look at this one, this part and this part, well, they are consistent with each other, right? Intersection, yeah, sure, they intersect with each other consistently. But if you look at the global entire picture, then, well, it, it's, it's impossible. You up, go up and up and up and up and you come back. No, it's not possible, right? So that's, that's the same, formally, that's the same idea. Now, so uh, given this, I can give you sort of a homological test for contextuality using check homology. So that gives you, uh, that allows you to have this homomorphism <coughs> that assigns to each section S, a uh, so called obstruction to global section, <coughs> gamma sub S, such that uh, this section extends to whole cycle if and only if that obstruction vanishes. So call cycles are something like this. This is a family of sections uh, such that if you, I mean, whenever they intersect with each other, the numbers of ins and outs match, right? So obviously, global sections are all call cycles. So you get this uh, uh, implication. So whenever the obstruction fails to vanish, you can see that, okay, that section cannot be extended to global section. That, that's the homological test for non-contextuality. Yeah? Unfortunately, uh, this direction doesn't go because that one is not a global section but a cool cycle. 
So, um, unfortunately, there are some false positives, uh, for example, in the Hardy model, but this test still works for many examples from quantum mechanics or quantum foundations, uh, including PR box. So, PR box looks like that. Yeah. And then you cannot find the uh, false uh, positive there. And cosmology is going to tell you that each section has a uh, non trivial obstruction. Yeah. And then I'm going to give you uh, a couple of minutes of explanation of why this works for so many uh, contextual non growth theorems in quantum mechanics. Sorry, uh, does it work for all strong contextual mechanics? Uh, known examples. In known examples of strong contextuality in quantum mechanics, all yeah, works for all. I mean, Hardy is not as strongly contextual, so it doesn't work. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, sort of a um, uh, formalization of so called all versus nothing argument. So the point is that given a joint outcome, they may or may not satisfy certain parity equations, right? If you get 0, 0, then yeah, they add up to 0, mod 2. 0, 1 equals 1 mod 2, and so on, 1, 1, 0 mod 2, and so on. So it's good. So uh, apply this to PR box. You get this system of equations. Yeah, so those are correlated. This is anti-correlated. Uh, then if you add them up uh, mod 2, then the left-hand size must be equal to right-hand size, but no, because left-hand size, uh, each variable occurs twice, so everything cancels out. Right hand side, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the right hand side must be 1, uh, mod 2. So this cannot be the case. Therefore, the equations are inconsistent. In other words, there's no global assignment of values to the variables. Therefore, strongly contextual. So that's the easy argument uh, for strong contextuality. But actually, it's not just a uh, PR, PR box, but quantum mechanics have all sorts of strong, strongly contextuality argument that can be rewritten in the all versus nothing format like this. Yeah, uh, I will skip over. Uh, but the, uh, if you look at the quantum information literature, there are some tables, non-signaling tables, that doesn't really uh, admit the uh, uh, parity argument, but still satisfy something like this. Uh, each variable occurs three times, in counting uh, this twice, so the left hand side cancels out mod 3, but the right hand side adds up to 8, equals 2 mod 3, so it's inconsistent again. Uh, so, so this is a uh, uh, sort of a, uh, this suggests the need of generalization, so let's generalize. So generalize all versus nothing argument, uh, uses a, uh, any commutative ring with unit, and then uh, you draw a, you, you write a uh, linear equations, using those coefficients, and then equations are inconsistent if the left hand side cancels out, but the right hand side do not. So this is generalized uh, uh, all versus nothing argument. Now, uh, let's go back to the co uh, comparison relation to cohomology. So actually, strongly contextual by AVN or generalized all versus nothing argument in uh, this sense, is actually sufficient, it implies a uh, strongly contextual uh, by using a cohomological test. That's a, uh, the main theorem of the paper. So uh, the point is that they, uh, there's a hierarchy even among strongly contextual models. So starting with ABN, or I mean, all versus nothing argument, and then generalize using any ring uh, that's contained in cohomologically strongly contextual, and then it's uh, contained in all these strongly contextual models. And actually, uh, yeah, uh, we'll ask this question, but strongly, all the known strongly contextual models from quantum mechanics is uh, contained in this, this class. So it's sort of a working uh, um, conjecture right now to somehow show that this is actually the case. So uh, let me conclude. So uh, I hope I was clear enough that the, uh, the formalism I showed you is sort of a structural, uh, general enough, uh, and gives you a, a uniform methods, and then contextuality is shown to be topological in nature, and then the uh, cohomology sort of uh, works, and then the, uh, the relation between all there is nothing on the cohomology is uh, sort of a theorem that the contextuality of ADN models are captured by cohomology. Um, thank you.
mean this one. Yeah. This one. Mm -hmm. Definitely not true. But we got so many. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, I mean, this is a, a pioneer case that was strongly contextual but doesn't admit parentality. So that was an example. Uh, let's get one from over uh, next. So uh, uh, global inconsistency yeah. as well. So, yeah. One question here. Yeah, I was just trying to understand if uh, do you have examples of each of these in the hierarchy, like quantitative. Uh, so uh, JZ is here, okay. and the Pioneer's example lives in here, okay. and the cohomological. Uh, let's see, uh, what's the non-trivial example here? Do you, do you remember? It's a You can construct one that's, I mean, all the levels are right. But that's not, that's not the, uh, in the literature yet. it is isn't really impressive so you should uh, it should come with the uh, look this is a topological you know invariant and all sorts of analysis should come uh, so I should mention that the uh, if you go back to the uh, reading as a uh, boolean variables and equations then of course there's a strong connection with the uh, sat satisfiability problem so you can I mean import the say technique from there back to here but I mean, what I presented so far isn't really about efficiency. Another question there. Uh, so far, you can make the analogy to non-orientability. Oh yes, 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 yes. Uh, I I <laughs> I cut off the uh, uh, picture, but yes, I mean, you can embed the uh, PR box to a uh, maybe a strip. For instance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a uh, in in nice cases there's a, a clear connection between non-orientability and uh, um, sort of a, a strong contextuality. It was non, non uh, or maybe logical uh, logical one as well. Oh yeah, not so in this. All these pictures should be, I, I, I want to draw them, so I sort of took a uh, simple examples, like two values. But actually, you can take four values, and then the PR box or logical paradox become a uh, client bottle, and so on. Uh, three, you can, what, well, embed still, yes. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, General general abstract definition would work on any cases like that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Nice. Lovely. Later. Um, one more short question, if we have one. Otherwise, no. What's what's wrong with what's wrong with Okay. Um. Yeah. It's a. Uh, it. Uh, it totally uh, uh, so any of the measurement outcome is going to exclude the uh, yeah, logical no uh, local hidden variables even. so that's why uh, actually all there's nothing is due to moment he used the, that the, uh, sort of phrase to say that they are uh, all according to quantum no uh, to classical but nothing according to quantum and so on so yeah, um, yeah. okay let's thank you.